the invitation that opened old wounds. Growing up, my sister Jessica was my tormentor, my critic, and my constant reminder of what I wasn't. She was the epitome of perfection in our small town, the straight-A student, the prom queen, the golden child. I was her antithesis, or so she liked to tell everyone. While Jessica thrived on attention, I preferred the company of books and daydreams. She knew how to get under my skin, whether it was by mocking my thrift store wardrobe in front of her friends or dismissing my dreams of being an artist as childish fantasies. My parents, busy working two jobs to keep food on the table, never intervened. That's just how siblings are, my mom would say with a wave of her hand. But it wasn't sibling rivalry. It was constant humiliation. When Jessica left for college, I felt like I could finally breathe. I poured myself into my studies, worked hard to land a scholarship, and eventually moved to the city to start my career as a graphic designer. For the first time, I felt like I was building a life free from her shadow. But Jessica? She never stopped shining. She married Mark, a wealthy entrepreneur, and their lives looked picture-perfect on social media. Luxury vacations, designer outfits, and now the pièce de résistance, a brand new mansion in an upscale neighborhood. When her housewarming invitation arrived in the mail, I was tempted to throw it away. The gold embossed lettering and Jessica's handwritten note, can't wait to see you, felt like another reminder of her success. But a part of me, buried beneath years of hurt, was curious. Was this an olive branch? Or just another chance for her to show off? The party begins. The night of the party, I stood outside her massive house, my small gift bag trembling in my hands. The sight before me was almost surreal. A sprawling two-story mansion with perfectly manicured lawns, its driveway packed with luxury cars. String lights glowed softly from the trees, and the hum of laughter spilled out from the open windows. Just get through tonight, I muttered to myself adjusting my simple navy blue dress. When Jessica opened the door, her reaction caught me off guard. She looked genuinely pleased, or at least she played the part well. Emma, you made it, she exclaimed, pulling me into a quick hug. Her floral perfume was overwhelming, and her glittering cocktail dress screamed extravagance. Of course, I replied, my voice barely audible over the sound of clinking glasses and chatter behind her. Inside, the house was as grand as I'd imagined. Marble floors gleamed under soft chandelier lighting, and modern art adorned every wall. A live quartet played in the corner, their music blending seamlessly with the low buzz of conversation. As Jessica led me through the crowd, introducing me to her guests, I felt like an outsider. This is my little sister, Emma, she said with a saccharine smile. She's a graphic designer, always been the artsy one in the family. Her tone dripped with condescension, as though my career was a quaint little hobby compared to her glamorous life. Her friends nodded politely, their smiles just a bit too tight, and I felt the familiar sting of inadequacy creeping in. An unlikely ally. I eventually slipped away, finding solace in the quiet of the dining room. There, I met Mark, her husband, who was busy arranging glasses of champagne on a silver tray. Emma, right? he said, smiling warmly. I've heard so much about you, it's great to finally meet. All good things, I hope, I replied, trying to match his light-hearted tone. He laughed. Mostly. Jessica mentioned you're the one who made that cheesecake she loves. I blinked, surprised. She actually likes it? Are you kidding? She raves about it. I've been dying to try it myself. His genuine enthusiasm caught me off guard, and for the first time that night, I felt a little less invisible. Mark was nothing like I'd expected, kind, approachable, and far more grounded than Jessica. The photo. After mingling with a few more guests, I joined Jessica's house tour. She moved through each room with the grace of a queen, pointing out custom finishes and imported furniture like a seasoned host. When we reached the master bedroom, my eyes landed on something that stopped me cold, a framed photo on her nightstand. It was of our parents' old house, the tiny, weathered home where we'd grown up. My chest tightened. That house had been everything to me. When our parents passed away, Jessica convinced me to sell my share, saying she needed the money to support her growing family. 
She promised it was for the best, and though it broke my heart, I agreed. Seeing that photo now, nestled in the midst of her opulence, felt like a slap in the face. Jessica, I said, my voice trembling with anger, why do you have that photo? She glanced at it and shrugged. Oh, it's sentimental, you know, a reminder of where we came from. Where we came from? I said, my voice rising. You mean the house you guilted me into selling so you could fund this? I gestured around the room, my face hot with fury. The room fell silent. Jessica's smile faltered, replaced by a flicker of panic. Emma, let's not do this here, she hissed. But I wasn't backing down. You manipulated me, Jessica. That house meant everything to me, and you turned it into a stepping stone for your ego. Mark's Intervention Before Jessica could respond, Mark stepped in. Emma's right, he said, his tone calm but firm. We should have handled that differently. I didn't know how much that house meant to you. Jessica turned to him, her eyes wide with disbelief. Mark, don't... No, Jess, he interrupted. You've been so focused on appearances that you've forgotten what really matters. For a moment, I almost felt sorry for her. Jessica looked vulnerable, stripped of the confidence she always wielded like a weapon. Rebuilding bridges. The rest of the party was awkward, and I left shortly after the confrontation. But a few days later, something unexpected happened. Jessica called me. Emma, she began, her voice hesitant. I've been thinking about what you said. I'm sorry. For everything. I was silent, unsure if her words were genuine or just another performance. I've always felt like I had to prove myself, she continued. To Mom, to Dad, to you. I didn't realize how much I hurt you in the process. Her vulnerability caught me off guard. For so long, I'd seen Jessica as untouchable, but now she sounded... human. Though I wasn't ready to forgive her entirely, I agreed to meet for coffee. That conversation marked the beginning of something I never thought possible. A tentative truce. Jessica and I will never be best friends, but for the first time, I feel like we're on the path to understanding each other, not as rivals, but as sisters. And maybe, just maybe, that's enough. Growing up in her sister Jessica's shadow, Emma always felt like the underdog. Years of bullying and manipulation had driven a wedge between them, but an unexpected invitation to Jessica's glamorous housewarming party rekindles old wounds. Amid the glitz and grandeur of her sister's new life, Emma discovers a painful reminder of their shared past, a revelation that leads to an emotional confrontation. In a night filled with tension, vulnerability, and unexpected truths, two sisters must decide if they can move beyond rivalry and find a path toward reconciliation.